Uh, thank you, Simon. And uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, those of you with a good memory for these things may recall my talk on the forge in Forge Valley in October 2020, in which I mentioned a site close to Raincliffe Woods where um, we'd found evidence of iron making. Um, and that's the, the mound there, the, the little red dot um, in, the, in the top right hand corner. Uh, the mound was first recorded as part of the Society's survey of the archaeology of the woods in 2015 to 2017. And on a subsequent visit to the mound, former Society member John Dean and I noted uh, black soil, possibly indicative of burning in the area of the mound, along with several surface spreads of slag, iron slag, closer to the road, uh, low road there that you see on the, on the, on the map. Um, soil samples were taken and tested for evidence of burning by measuring the magnetic susceptibility of the soil. And this tests, test measures changes in the magnetic field within the material, usually caused by burning. And the results indicated there had been high intensity burning on the mound, suggesting the burning of charcoal as fuel rather than simply burning wood or making charcoal itself. Uh, from this and the presence of slag nearby, we concluded the site may have been a bloomery for iron smelting. And this possibly occurred in the medieval period as Henry Percy, Lord of the Manor of Sema, gained permission from the crown in 1334 to build forges in his, in his manor, which included Raincliffe Woods. Um, the, uh, this slide shows the, uh, the, the, the plan of the mound. Um, it's a subcircular feature with a maximum di diameter of 18 meters. The flat top uh, here in, uh, around this tree stump, uh, is off center to the southwest and has the appearance of a separate, slightly higher mound measuring nine meters in diameter. So it's kind of a mound upon a mound. Uh, a shallow gully of unknown date um, and purpose cuts the northwest quadrant of the upper mound, while beyond the mound to the west is a slight scarp which marks the west edge of a track here. Um, with a slight earthwork bank beyond. And uh, the bank is probably upcast from an adja adjacent draining, drainage ditch, which forms the boundary between the wood and a field next to it, um, to the west belonging to Thorn Park Farm. Trench one in 2019 aligned east-west, which uncovered the surface of a track just 10 centimeters below the surface. The metalling uh, consisted of broken angular limestone hardcore, and there was no evidence of wheel ruts in the very narrow strip we exposed, and the full width of the track was, was around two meters. And trench two was um, five by one meter and was positioned towards the southwest edge of the upper mound. It contained this uh, the it, it contained the south south face of a freestanding wall of small boulders either side of a 50 centimeter wide gap. Uh, this was an intriguing feature requiring further investigation. And this was the main focus of the 2021 excavation. And this is the plan of what we uncovered. Um, under the topsoil, the natural ground surface consisted of a light brown yellow deposit of stone-free glacial sandy clay uh, across the eastern half of the trench, a shallow curving uh, depression, no more than uh, six inches, 15 centimeters deep, cut into the natural surface. That's F101 there. Um, it probably continues further to the east beyond the edge, and we probably excavated about half of it. The boulder wall, uh, F103, was aligned east-west and it sat entirely within the depression with the top of the wall slightly higher than the top of the depression. And the wall probably continues beyond the, the eastern edge, um, but it didn't do so at the western end where um, there was this uh, 
a patch about a meter square of gray clay layer, F105, um, and that was, contained some small stones, that was all. You get a better idea of what we were looking at in, in this photograph. And as you can see, the wall comprised several large, roughly rectangular slabs of uncut stone in a row, sitting on the base of the depression with no evidence of a foundation cut. Uh, several loosely set blocks on either side had probably tumbled from the wall, indicating it may originally have been two courses high and therefore stood higher than the existing ground surface. The 50 centimetre gap in the middle uh, of the wall looks to be an original feature as the sides were defined by two narrow slabs set, set vertically to emphasise the opening, partially closed in this photo by a tumbled stone. At the base of the gap, sitting on the natural ground surface was a setting of fire reddened stones indicative of burning. There was no evidence of scorching on either of the adjoining vertical slabs that defined the gap. And this section across the trench shows the wall at F103 and the depression F101 that it sits in. Um, filling in the depression, both in front of and behind the wall, was a layer, 104, filled with a uniform dark brown black soil, the high density of blackened cobbled sized stones and smaller pebbles. The colour of the deposit may be a combination of a large amount of burnt material in the soil matrix and a high organic component. And this is the wall fully excavated and with the tumbled stones removed, we found clearer evidence of burning and we found a piece of charcoal on the north side, and in this area here behind um, this vertical stone. Um, <clears throat> yeah, immediately to the east of the gap. The charcoal was in a discrete deposit at the base of the depression. On the north side of the wall, sealed below one of the tumbled stones, as and a sample of this deposit was sent for carbon-14 dating. No other datable finds were recovered from the fill of the depression, and the only finds within the rest of the trench were in the topsoil were two broken prehistoric blades of grey flint. Uh, despite this, the lack of finds, I was confident, given the amount of ironworking evidence spread around the surface, that the return date would be around 1400 AD. Um, in fact, the uh, carbon-14 sample returned a date that, well, uh, the charcoal was 3,169 years old um, with a 95% probability of accuracy and giving a date between 1,405 and 1,505 BC. So placing it firmly in the Middle Bronze Age. Uh, needless to say, the, the date um, of the the carbon-14 date produced has been a total shock and um, it's some, quite some surprise that I'm still trying to get over, to be honest. Um, and further investigation is planned. Now, to provide a fresh view of the stratigraphy, uh, we opened a second trench to the east of Trench 1, um, and this was just a metre square. And again, we found the same natural uh, yellow, brown, glacial, sandy clay, as, as we did in, in the tr main trench one. The natural was overlain by a 40 centimetre thick deposit of uniform dark soil, containing a few random cobble-sized rocks and smaller pebbles, including a small piece of iron slag. Uh, five sherds of late medieval pottery were just recovered from this deposit, together with several large fragments of charcoal. Um, the finds from this trench uh, were consistent with what was expected of the site, uh, medieval activity associated with iron making, uh, but it took us no nearer to identifying precisely where this activity took place. Finally, um, further surveys have been carried out at Thorn Park over the winter, and we've noticed several deposits of large stone boulders not entirely dissimilar uh, in size and shape to the uh, stones making up the wall in trench one. 
Um, I'd like to thank all members of the field team who've worked on the site and Chris Wilson, uh, pictured here, the farmer at Thorn Park, for his enthusiastic support for the project and his practical help on site. We will be returning to this site shortly and, and probably later in the year as well. And I hope we will find some answers to the huge questions, really, the 2021 dig has, uh, has thrown up for us. Thank you.